Hello there. In this video, I will show you how to clip and compress a video for the EdTPA. And we'll do that using a video tool called Panopto, which is built right into our online campus. So at this point, I have already recorded my EdTPA video and I've moved it over onto my computer. I've also opened the online campus here, Desire to Learn, and I've accessed my course. So from my course homepage, the first thing that I'm going to need to do is open the Panopto tool. In order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and click on the content link right here. And then I'm going to use the search topics box here to search for Panopto. P-A-N-O-P-T-O. -O, Panopto. I click the search icon and I find the NLU Panopto recordings link. Now in case you search for Panopto and you don't come up with anything, it may be that your instructor has not yet activated the Panopto tool in your course. If that's the case, you need to contact your instructor and ask that he or she activates the Panopto tool so that you can use it. If you do see the link right here, you can go ahead and click on it to access the Panopto tool. Once you've accessed the Panopto tool, go ahead and click on this folder right here. Mine says 91349. Yours will be different depending on your CRN number. And then now we can upload our videos into this empty folder here. So to upload a video, I'm going to go ahead and click on the blue create button here. And I'm going to click upload media. I click anywhere inside of this box right here. And now I can find the video file on my computer. Mine happens to be right here on my desktop, so I just go ahead and click on it, and I click open. And the file automatically begins uploading to Panopto. So we can see here that my file size is 306 megabytes. So that's already fairly small. If you recorded your video on a high quality camera or on a camera phone, it's very likely that your video file size is much larger than this. If that's the case, I would highly recommend using a wired internet connection when you upload your video. A lot of times, especially for larger files, if you're using a wireless connection, the upload can fail or it can be dropped or it can just seem to take forever, which generally means that it failed. So again, for larger file sizes, make sure you're using a wired internet connection. So we'll just go ahead and give this another second and it should actually tell us that this upload is completed. And there we go, it says upload complete. You can now close this window. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the window. That's gonna bring us back to our Panopto folder here. And we can see that the video file is now visible here, but it's still processing. Um, we're going to have to wait for this video to finish processing before we're going to be able to clip and compress the video further. So we'll cut here and we'll come right back. Okay, so it looks like my video has completed processing. Now that I have my video uploaded into Panopto, I can now clip it and then compress it. So what I'm going to do is hover my cursor over my video and you'll, see, you'll notice an edit link appears. I click the edit link and that's going to open the Panopto video editor. Over in the upper right hand portion of the screen you'll see a preview of your video and you'll see a play button here and a timeline so you can go ahead and play this video just like a normal video uh, in case you want to preview what's been uploaded. So let's say now that I'm ready to then cut my video or clip my video to only show the portion that I want to be assessed by the EdTPA. What I can do is click on the little scissors icon right here and then two blue tabs appear on the timeline below. So now what I can do is I can click on the tab and I can drag it to wherever I want my video to begin. Let's say that I want to cut out the first two minutes of my video so I'll just move this tab to about the two minute mark right there. I'll let it go and that's going to cut out the first two minutes of the video. Notice that the beginning of the video here is now grayed out. That means that this portion of the video will not be included in the final version of the video. And so I can do the same thing for the end of the video. Let's say that I want to cut out the last two minutes of my video. So I just grab the tab over here on the right and I just drag the tab inward to cut out the last two minutes of my video. So I'll just drop it here at the 18 minute mark. I again let that go and that's going to cut off the end of the video.
And so now here in the middle between the two tabs is going to be the portion of video that I want to be assessed by the EdTPA. What I do now is I click Publish, I click OK, and now I can go ahead and close this extra tab which is going to return me to D2L. At this point I'll want to go ahead and change some of the settings on this video so that I can download it to my computer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click the settings menu here. I'm going to click the outputs tab. And then I'm going to scroll down just a little bit here to the video podcast section. So this is going to be the file that we're going to download to our computer so that we can then upload it to EdTPA later on. So we, immediately I noticed that the preview is wrong. It's actually set to picture in picture by default. So we're going to use this drop down menu here and we're going to change this to primary video only. And we can see now that our primary video or the video we captured is now prominently displayed. Below that you can change the quality of the video. Now this is where the compression comes into play. Um, generally for EdTPA I would select generally what's going to be the lowest setting available. Uh, my lowest setting is 576p at 30 frames per second. Um, that's generally acceptable for the EdTPA. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. I'm going to click on apply. It's going to say that this video will need to reprocess blah blah blah. I click OK. And then as soon as I do that, the video is going to then reprocess again. We can see that it says podcast not ready, queued. Um, so again, this could take um, a few minutes in order to process. So we'll take another quick break and we'll come back as soon as this is done processing. Okay, so again, my video has completed processing and now I can see that there is a download podcast button that has appeared. Um, sometimes the page won't automatically update. You'll need to refresh that manually. Uh, a quick tip, what you can do is you can just click on any of these other tabs here and then click back to the outputs tab and the page should then be refreshed and you should be able to see the download podcast link. So I just click the download podcast link and the video will then download to my computer. Um, because I'm using a Windows computer, I can see here that the file size is now 173 megabytes, which is well within range for the EdTPA. Remember that the maximum file size here is about 500 megabytes, although I would recommend trying to get this file size somewhere in the area of about 250 megabytes or less. Um, so I would just save the file, I would click OK, and the video file would then download to my computer. And that's that. Uh, we can go ahead and close this video, or close the window I mean, and the video here will just remain in EdTPA um, in case we ever need to come back to it later on. So that is how to clip and compress a video file using Panopto, which is built into desire to learn um, it could be the case that your file size is still a little bit too large for the EdTPA. You remember that ours was well within range. If your file size is still above 500 megabytes per video file, you'll need to further compress your file using a different program. Um, for that, I recommend using a program called Handbrake. And there, there is a separate tutorial for the Windows and the uh, Mac versions, which I have linked in the video description below on YouTube. So if you do need to compress your file further, go ahead and watch those videos as well. Um, another quick tip, if you don't actually have access to a wired internet connection and you do have a particularly large file, you can actually compress your video file using Handbrake first and then upload the, the file to D2L and you should have an easier time uploading the video file that way. Anyways, I hope this video was informative for you and thank you for watching.